The banking system is controlled by a few select individuals at the very top, and they are able to manipulate the central bankers underneath them. This is a global policy, and that affects all of the commercial banks around the world, which is in between you and the currency supply. So today, I will demystify this whole situation. I will unveil it. I'll show you how the banking system works. Easy explanations with diagrams you came here for the truth so let me unveil that for you let's get into some of these today the first diagram to show you is the Fed and I'm showing the printing press here but this applies to all central banks around the world they have the exact same policies once again because they're administered from a higher source and here is that printing press and then of course they hand out the money to the commercial banks which eventually goes to you I did another diagram which is similar so I'll just move on to that and just wanted to show you at the top you have your central bank then the commercial banks underneath that and then all of the people like you and I underneath that on the way from the central bank into your pocket there is inflation that's created at the commercial bank level I'm going to show you where all of that money is squandered so this is um, you know something that's been happening for quite some time the introduction of the Federal Reserve in 19 1913 was not the first time uh, was not the first introduction of central banking but it was definitely going to be uh, one of the most important and prominent moments in financial history and we can see where it has headed since then with the destruction of the dollar ever since this here is a quote from the book and I'm talking about fractional reserve banking fractional reserve banking is the most important thing you need to know about the banking system so essentially you give one dollar to the bank and on average this these numbers depend but let's just say for the purposes of this video is that they can thereby lend out ten dollars so imagine that you give one dollar they can lend out ten dollars now why did this happen well historically what happened with the origination of this uh, banking system we had all these people dumping their money into the bank so then the banker realized that not everybody comes to pick up their money at any given moment so he has all of this money left over and thinks wow I could really do something with this money. I could essentially steal these people's money, gamble with it, and then make more profit. And that's exactly what's been happening, and it's been getting worse and worse. So let's get into this here. I, uh, I said, picture this in your mind if you want to think about fractional reserve banking take a pyramid it's got a wide base and a narrow top it's got a firm footing on the ground it's stable because it's designed it's designed with that intentionally now flip it upside down that's fractional reserve banking can you believe it that they've actually taken a solid foundational system and flipped it on its head and you know specifically what is going to happen now let's look at the money GPS pyramid this is something I've shown you guys before but here we are at the very bottom of the pyramid we look at real assets and that is the very smallest little part there and above that the monster fractional reserve banking I'll just mention quickly the derivative which is on top of that is astronomical I won't get into that in this video because I've already covered it in another video check uh, check that out if you uh, are interested but essentially we have fractional reserve banking on top of that they're able to multiply the amount of money that is in circulation and all because of the money that we put in so we are actually fueling this entire system so let's move on right here to this and uh, uh, governments create debt as time goes on so you have a central bank that's simply sitting there with the printing press and they have one option and that is to buy the debt of that uh, country in this instance I'm showing you the US and the Fed but it applies to all nations the US sells its debt to the Fed and then you could see how the Fed gives it money and then they give it these bonds which are simply just IOUs and what happens where does the Fed get this money well it's a printing press it's literally printing it out of thin air the Fed is left with a pile of IOUs you can see the pile at the bottom there and I assure you this pile has been getting bigger we're our, we will show you that in a second here. Let's go on right here. We're looking at over $4 trillion 
dollars worth of money that the Federal Reserve is sitting on. And this is the uh, amount that they are willing to admit. Can you believe this? So this is the St. Louis adjusted monetary base. There are all sorts of statistics you can look at, but this is just one going to show you ever since the financial crisis, look at how the staircase is being formed upward. And I assure you, it's only heading in one direction. Now, individuals can pull their money out of the banking system, but the Federal Reserve is always going to be there to backstop that. And they will print and they will print and they will print. If you see up until the financial crisis, there was a gradual increase in the amount of money that was printed. But ever since then, it has been extreme escalations, all because of the quantitative easing programs that have been taking place. This is something that basically goes on top of the fractional reserve banking altogether. And right here, we have the bailouts that occur. I just showed you this one example of how they lie to us. I mentioned the fact that it was over $4 trillion, but we had seen historically that they had printed at least $16 trillion in the Federal Reserve alone, and they gave out money to banks all around the world. Here is the Finance Minister of Canada, Jim Flaherty. He said this, To be clear, despite conspiracy theories to the contrary, there was no secret bailout. See, Canada was just one of the countries around the world to receive money from the Federal Reserve. Now, does that make any sense to you that we would have a central bank of another nation print money when that central bank in that nation has its own printing press? Something else is going on here. So now this is just a conspiracy theory anyway. So let's just bring up some news here. Perhaps, oh, wait a minute, Bloomberg, they happen to receive some information and they found as much as $1.2 trillion in public money to banks and other companies from August 2007 to April 2010. If you look through this list, I'm sure the, the bank that you bank at is in this list. I looked through this, just quickly, briefly looked through. I found all sorts of Canadian banks that are in here. Sure, the bailouts aren't as big as someone like Morgan Stanley and Citigroup and Bank of America. But you will go through here and you will see specifically that there are every country around the world is receiving this type of money. And this goes to show you the banking system, how fraudulent it is. So number one, they are using fractional reserve banking. Then on top of that, they have the printing press given to them by their central bank, and depending on which nation that is. Then they take the money and they squander it by allowing bailouts to all of these different organizations, whether it's in the finance industry, whether it's the car manufacturers, as we saw with General Motors, taking their money from the bailouts and opening up factories in China and Brazil and closing down factories in the Western nations. This is what happens. It's going to continue to happen all because of the structure of the banking system itself. It is a pyramid flipped upon its head and then we have derivatives sitting on top of that, which will ultimately mean the destruction of this system altogether and we will suffer the consequences. I hope that you found this video informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I'm going to be including these type of videos every so often. They may be a little basic for you and uh, you know you may not have learned much from the video, but perhaps someone that you know is interested in this type of information. I'm always getting requests from people that are just getting into this right now. And I'd like to make a financial program for these people, have it available for free so that they can learn as well. They can get up to speed and I'll be there to teach them because simply nobody's willing to go back to the basics and start teaching people the essentials, what they need to know, what they never were taught in school, what the mainstream media will absolutely not cover. So that's what I will do here. I'll continue to do that. I'm going to create a playlist at the bottom of all of these new videos. But essentially, if you go to the money, GPS, my main YouTube uh, channel page. You can uh, see them there as I collect them. And this is the type of thing that we want to share with our friends or family. Uh, a lot of the videos here people aren't really interested in, but perhaps a video like this will get them to come in to this type of information. So I hope that is uh, very uh, good for you as well. And let's 
uh, go to this, the insiders. If you're not already, you need to become an insider because it's where I give out all my best intel for free. And that is available at themoneygps.com. You just scroll down to the bottom, fill in your email address, and you get occasional emails from me with good, short, concise info.